When you think of Indonesia, you might think of rice paddies, beaches and temples, but what you might not think of are endangered species, palm oil monocultures and deforestation. Now what if I told you that I found two Indonesian islands who are beginning to see tangible progress in tackling these problems, even though they're home to 96% of Indonesia's palm oil production. What's this picture about? Stay put to find out. Coming up! Mud roads, jungles, and a lot of good news about your trees in two different projects. Welcome to Tree Update 38. A couple of months ago, I made my way to the beautiful island of Sumatra, where my trip got off to a bit of a rocky start. We were on our way to meet our tree planting partners at FKL in the middle of the Loiser ecosystem, where I went to check on how your trees are doing since they were planted. In case you didn't know, the Loiser ecosystem is one of the most ancient forest ecosystems. It covers 2.6 million hectares of rainforest, provides water to more than 4 million people living around it, and it's the only home of critically endangered species like the Sumatran orangutan, which has sadly become almost extinct. When we talk about the orangutan, we must talk about three because it's basically the center of their life. They are arboreal, so they spend almost the whole of their life on the top of the tree. It's their home, it's their food, it's their everything. Palm oil plantations take away majority of their homes. At the moment, in Sumatra, there is about four times palm oil plantations in number compared to one habitat of orangutan left standing. They cannot swing from the tree to another anymore because it's only palm oil. But thanks to the efforts of organizations such as FKL, things are changing now, both for nature but also for people, where once communities saw no other options but to harm this ecosystem, which is also their own home, they are now protecting it, and they're even making a living out of it. Let me explain. FKL approached former loggers, poachers, and owners of palm oil plantation in over 30 communities whose livelihood often depend on those harmful and illegal activities, and have given them an alternative. These individuals now form so-called patrol teams, who regularly monitor the jungle to remove wildlife traps set by illegal poachers, for example, activities they themselves used to do. So not only FKL is helping communities to find sustainable alternatives to palm oil plantations, but by involving their community members, they're also inspiring other communities to join them as well. And this is similar to what we have seen in another organization a couple of years before, the Sumatran Orangutan Society. Selama dahulu, kita banyak hal yang untuk merugikan ya negara ataupun semua saudara-saudara kita seperti kita main elagalogin ataupun pemburuan jadi terus pekerjaan itu kita teruskan nah, dengan itu ya saya terus belajar 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 ternyata semua yang pernah saya lakukan ternyata banyak merugikan bukan saja negara tetapi semua saudara-saudara kita dan sampai sekarang ya alhamdulillah Kita udah suka dan mencintai pekerjaan ini. Ecosia has been working closely with FKL over the past few years. And so far, we've planted around 500,000 trees to support farmers in reduce deforestation. And here's the absolute best part. Look at what I saw when I monitored your trees. If you look closely at this restoration area from 2020, which we've been monitoring using the PCQ methodology, you'll notice that it hasn't changed at all over the past few years. Well, technically, you're not really able to tell the difference here. But what I can tell you is that back in 2020, we went to monitor these trees, and then we went back again in 2023 using the same methodology at the same locations. And the results show that, you know, it's pretty much the same, meaning that no deforestation has happened there since we started the project. In other words, FKL's approach is working. You can see it clearly in this picture taken from the same spots in the same season, but only two years apart. This is the hut with the patrol teams hangs around in when they're not running around in the jungle. And this is the free space they left from cutting down palm oil and other monocultures to make space for nature to regenerate. And regenerate it did. Of course, we're in a tropical country here, so nature takes over quickly, but this is pretty amazing. In recent years, the Loiser ecosystem has captured the attention of several international celebrities, including Leonardo DiCaprio. But in the end, don't forget that you are the real superstar of the story. Yes, you. Because by using Ecosia, you're helping us restore precious rainforests like the Loiser ecosystem while giving local communities a chance to thrive and endangered species a chance to live. 
And now to my second stop in West Kalimantan in Borneo, which is the third largest island in the world. Here, I met the incredible Pete Abik, a 74-year-old activist who single-handedly started a green revolution that changed the lives of his community forever. And if it feels like you have seen him before, well, it's because you have. Pete was featured extensively in this video on our channel along with his community, the Dayak tribe. This is an indigenous tribe that fully depends on the forest for their survival. But Pete began to notice that farmers in his community were slowly starting to rely on palm oil plantations to make money, which was degrading their native forests. Pete decided to do something about this. He began speaking to local farmers, convincing them to try farming other products, such as rubber and durian in agroforestry systems, which they could consume themselves or sell at the market without harming the forest. What started out as a group of 80 farmers soon turns into an entire community of traditional farmers who cultivate their own lands instead of selling them for profit. This is how the Gunung Saran Lestari Foundation was born, and today, all of their hard work is paying off. Thanks to Pete and your support of Ecosia, we've been able to plant more than 2 million trees in this region, increasing the amount of diverse native species to 60, pushing out monocultures of palm trees. And farmers are now beginning to realize the benefits of income diversification, which means that they no longer rely on a single crop for making money. And this is a success story, not just for the Dayak tribe, but also for all the climate activists everywhere, because it shows us the power of community and the power of one single person who's daring to do things differently. So check out Pete's powerful message that he has to the rest of the world. I hope everybody who see the, this uh, uh, picture or this film that can think that, oh, in the Borneo, or we call it as Kalimantan, there's no stupid indigenous people. They are smart and they are full of a wise culture. And that's it for this tree update. Thanks for watching. Leave us a comment just below. Tell us how you like this episode. And also, don't forget to like, subscribe. You know it already, but it makes such a difference. The more people know about Ecosia, the more we can do for this planet. I'm Melissa. This was Tree Update 38. And thanks for watching. See you next time. And action. <laughs> Sorry. I just have to think sometimes what we're doing here. <laughs> Gradually deteriorating the native forest. It's gonna be a tough one. Look there, inspiring, 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 that's the word, okay. Deteriorating. 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 It's working. Yes. Finally. Yeah. You are the real superstar of the story. Yes. You. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> <laughs>